Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the brake rotors and pads on the 2012 uh, Ford Expedition. So we're over here in Lumpy's garage and Steve and I are going to tackle this and I'll show you all the steps along the way. First thing you're going to want to do is loosen the uh, cap on the brake reservoir to help relieve some of the pressure when you can pressing the calipers, the brake calipers. So just want to come over here, loosen the cap. And let any pressure out. All right, we got the Tony's truck here, and we're going to change the brake pads and rotors on it. And we got a 13 millimeter uh, socket and ratchet set up to remove the two caliper bolts. We're going to roll those things back. He already released the cap for the brake fluid. We're going to collapse our pistons, remove the rotor, and we're going to lubricate our caliper pin boots here with some caliper pin lube that we have that's synthetic and um, we'll get it together with the new rotor and the new pads and we'll go through all of that. Yeah, we're going to pry it back. Now if we get it back just enough and we have the wheel turned, we can get our screwdriver in between the piston and the rotor and we're going to slowly collapse the piston. Get a bit of bite. You can do them one at a time. Pull the back the bottom up. Same thing, all I need is enough just to get my screwdriver in there so I can start collapsing the piston. Once you get it out enough, you can get in between the, the, the brake pad itself and the rotor. And then we can collapse the piston even more. Frozen. All right, we're going to put the caliper up on top. And we have our other method that we can use. Put the caliper pin on here. So as you can see, our calipers are mostly collapsed. We can use some vice grips to finish collapsing them. We do one at a time. Clamp this one on. We'll grab the other pair. Clamp on here. Pistons are collapsing there nice. You can use a C clamp with the old brake pad. If you take it off, you decide to go that route. So I like this method. Okay, they're both collapsed. Pull these off. I have a bungee cord set up so I can hang the caliper out of my way. Now it's nice and safe. There's no stress on my caliper hose. It's secured. It's holding on to the control arm. Checking my caliper pin boots. They're good. They're not torn. Sometimes they get overheated and cracked. If they get overheated and cracked, you're going to lose lube through them. You're going to want to replace the pin boot kits if that happens. Now his brake pads are frozen right here. These things weren't really working well because this pad right here is not working on the slide. So we're going to tap this out with the hammer and the screwdriver. So obviously Tony's brakes weren't working very well. <laughs> the deceiving part is when this happens, this gives you a false sense that you have a very firm brake pedal. And you think your brakes are good, but you don't have good stopping power. So 
slings around there pretty good, huh? Jeez. Oh, man. Oh, Live one. <laughs> if I didn't drive the thing like a stock car, it wouldn't be frozen. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty thin on that side over there. You see? Yeah. I ain't a lot of meat left there. No. So. Okay, this one's probably gonna come on with me. That's the way the other one should have came out. So obviously the clip on the inside has been very dry for a while. We're going to take the caliper bar off and these are, let's find out, I think they're 18s and 19s. Maybe they're... So what we're referring to uh, these clips on the inside right here. It's on the bottom and one at the top right here. We're going to take the 21 millimeter socket because we're fortunate to have an impact gun. We're going to let that do the work for us. Slide this on. Move our caliper up out of the way. Get that one out. All right, so we got the caliper off and we got the spindle bar off. Uh, without hurting ourselves too badly. No, <laughs> you almost dropped it on my head. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes these rotors are pressed on and they're just stuck right on there. And they have holes in them with threads. And you can thread a metric bolt in there and press them off. Fortunately, this one came off for us. So you can pull the rotor off and leave that off. And we're going to lubricate our surface here with Nevisees and uh, make sure that this is greased well so the next time you go in here again it won't be rusted onto the hub again. So um, this one fortunately came off good. My 2009 didn't come off very well and one of the differences on the 2009, the bolts for the caliper pins, the bracket is different and the brake pads are a little different but they had a 9 millimeter Allen for the 2009's and it's not a common um, Allen wrench that comes in a kit that you can buy at the local stores. I had to get it off the tool truck. So um, we're going to start by removing these clips right here. That's what the brake pad is riding on. I'm going to remove those. The clips have a little wrinkle on the outside. That goes to the outside of the caliper. See the rest spot that he had right here? Yeah. That, that was his pad not moving right there. So, um, so that was definitely a problem for him. So we're going to take, once I get this, these clips off, I take a little wire brush and just run a little wire brush in there just to get this surface nice and clean to make sure that it's uh, no rust scale builds up. They feel good, but we're going to run a little wire brush in here real quick. One of the other things we wanted to mention is if you have a brake rotor and it's stuck onto the hub and you don't have a couple of bolts to press it off, what you can also do is you can hit it from the back with like a small sledgehammer to break it free. You don't want to hit the flange of um, the hub bearing assembly. You want to hit the rotor and it might take a few tries. Sometimes you can kind of seize this little flange right here and be a little stubborn, but it's another way you can get to break the rotor free. Right, Steve? Yep. Now we're going to take our wire brush we're just going to clean the surface really good just so we get a little bit of shine in there get the if there's any heavy deposits on there now Tony and I were talking you know sometimes if you don't do a lot of mileage on your vehicle and your brakes are sitting they can, they can stick like this you know you want to go in and check your calipin boots every so often you know on a maintenance if you're going to pull your wheels off to do a tire rotation you know to, to loosen up the 13 millimeter bolts that we had right here, you can just unthread these bolts a little bit and as they're unthreading a little bit it gives you some play and you can push in on the boot to find out if it's still moving and if it's seized it gives you the feeling that you have a very firm hard brake and that your brakes are good but it, but it, the brakes are not going to work well at all if that is seized. So, all right, so we're going to get our clips on here. We said our clips went on the outsides.
Kind of press right in yeah, place. Just snap right in. This one's being a little stick. Seems like I have to put a little screwdriver in here to give us a little help to get it on there. Yeah, as you heard it drag on there. So we peel on that outer lip over the side of the caliper to help yeah. hold it in place. Okay. Yeah. It's got a little lip on the inside here. We catch that on the inside of the caliper. This is the part that was on the outside. We're pulling up on it, and then we're there. It goes right on there. Okay. Okay. So now, this is what we're gonna put to use the the uh, caliper pin lube, and this is synthetic. I like this particular brand. And we're going to so put this some. Is, um, is it Permatex? Permatex. Yeah, Permatex. After this caliper lube. Yeah. And um, so we're going to put a little, little coat in the slides here. Okay. Want that to have some good lube. And then we're going to pull our boots. I hold the boot. And you twist the, the pin back. Now you got some rust in here. If you have a wire wheel, you're going to want to wire wheel that out so it doesn't eventually end up getting pitted. So we're going to pull the other one out. We'll run them over to the wire wheel. Like I said you can give them a little twist to break the seal on the on the rubber. We're trying not to damage the rubber here. If you don't have a wire wheel, it's great to have one in your garage. You can get a fairly inexpensive one for Harbor Freight. If you tend to use it just once in a while. I have one in my workbench. You guys have probably seen it in my other videos. It works pretty awesome. But for stuff like this, you know, it's kind of like a godsend. Something you kind of have to have. So we're being very calp, uh, careful not to damage the boot. Okay, we got it up. But when you look at the pin, it's starting to get pitted and corroded up here. So sometimes these pins have a rubber end on the bottom of them, and sometimes they don't. His are, his are the same. So we're going to go run these over on the wire wheel and clean up. There's a lump of crust right in here. We'll clean these up. We're going to lube them up really good and get them to slide good. We'll be right back. Okay. Chucks are coming right off. No pitting on his shaft down in here, so this is all good. This is all good. We're just concentrating on getting an edge up here. The other shaft, there's no pitting on this. This is good. We're going to wipe these down and loop them up good, and they'll be good. Okay. Yeah. So, we're going to get these all cleaned up. That's good. Some lube on them. I like to get a little in the boot, put a little blob in there because when you press this in, it's going to try and
push the the grease fitting out, but when you get it uh, push the um, the pin out, but when you put it all together, that extra grease is going to end up in this boot, and that's kind of what you want. So see how it's springing back on me? When you push it in, it comes back out. So we want some extra grease in there. These brakes get very hot when you apply brakes, so this synthetic lube um, has a higher uh, heat tolerance. So I got a little blob in there, and then I'm getting this thing full. Put it all around. Now when I slide this in, it's going to try and push out. See it pushing out? That's what I want. That extra grease will stay in, in the boot here. Now we're going to get our rotor. We're going to never seize this. I know in the other videos I talk a lot about never seize. Well, if you're working on your own vehicle, it's going to be your best friend. So um, keep, it, keep it going with it. Put just a little thin coat on the studs here. <coughs> You want it all around here because this is where the rotor rides. We're good. Tony got the OEM Motocraft rotor. Now, this rotor does not have the holes in it like the other one did. So the other rotor might have been an aftermarket. So we're going to spray down the rotor to get the... Uh, they put a coating on them so when they're in storage that they don't rust. So you can use some brake clean. Just put a little brake clean on them. Wipe them off with a rag. We're only worried about the surface that's going to touch the brake brake pads. We'll sit that on there and get another can. Make sure we get it covered. Get all your surfaces clean on it. All we're really concerned about is the actual top of the pads right on. We're going to slide this on the. Uh, on the hub. Okay, we have our Nevisees on there already. We're going to line this up. I like to take a lug nut and throw the lug nut on. Holds the rotor from flopping around. So, and then we're going to grab that caliper bar and we're going to slide that on, bolt it on. And our bolts here that are in the back we're going to put a little Nevisees on these. Take that caliper bar, slide it on. Line up the holes. Start everything by hand. These things have fine bolt threads on them so they'll run right down nice. Took them off with the breaker bar, so I mean, with the impact gun, we can tighten them up with the breaker bar. You can impact them back down if you wanted, but you know, we'll just tighten them up with this. Nice and tight. Right. Now the brake pads are the same on both sides. We've already got our lube on our slide plates, so we can line up our brake pad 
into the guides. Steve said that the rear brake pad is fighting him, but I think he's just getting old and he can't see anymore. <laughs> that may be it. <laughs> okay, Good. so we're having some problem with this pad. The paint is a little thick on the edge here, so we took the paint off the edges of it and dry fit it on there. It's good. We made sure the lube's in there good. Now we'll slide this one on. This one was tight when we took it off as well. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to slide on, just like that. Okay, so that's all set. Now, I like to take a little bit of Nevisees to put it on the caliper here, just to get the, you know, keep a little uh, surface metal off the metal to metal surface. They give you a shim on the thing. And I find that if you put a little Nevisees on your caliper pin boots, it's gonna help them last from drying out. Um, and this ain't going to hurt anything. It's not going to touch the brake pad, the, uh, the surface at all. It's just going to touch the back side. A little coat on, keep those boots lubricated. This stuff is good to 1700 degrees, the high test uh, never sees. So we have our rotor on. We have our caliper pins lubed. We have our... Um, caliper pin all lubricated and set to go. You want to make sure that you don't twist the line when you're going to put this back on. And the last thing we're going to do is put a little never sees on our two bolts that are going to go into here. So put a little on those. Take our caliper off of here. Slide it on. And that's all collapsed, so we're good. Line up our boots at the bottom here. And you have flat spots on these caliper pins, and those go up like you have them flat on the top, flat on the bottom there. Now we're going to catch our bolts here. Once you catch that one, you can catch your bottom one. If you, if you get any of your paw prints on the brake pads, you can take some sandpaper, just scuff them to get them off. You don't want grease on your new brake pads. You don't want grease on your rotor. 15 millimeters right now. And then we're gonna go in and to press the brake pedal, pump up the brake to push this caliper out. And then when we do the other side, we won't be pushing any fluid out the reservoir cap, making a mess. So this one's tight. And that one's tight. And we're going to be on to the next side. So everything on this side worked out. And... Um, We'll get our wheel back on, we'll pump up the brake pedal, and then we're going to start on the other side. So that's pretty much it. You do the other side the exact same way as this side. Hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it. And if you have any questions, leave a comment. We'll reply back to you. Thanks for watching, guys.